class of Dar al-Tifl al-Arabi orphanage. A few weeks later, Israel declared itself a state and was recognized almost immediately as such by American President Harry Truman, as Dr. Nahida previously mentioned. With the exception of a few of the graves of the martyrs at Dar Yassin, they will never be known as they were bulldozed by the state of Israel, apparently to make way for the new Jewish settlers. The terrorist criminals who perpetrated the Dairy Seed Massacre were never punished and were never brought to justice. Instead, they were rewarded. And one former leader, Irgun of the Irgun, Menachem Begin, became prime minister soon after, like I mentioned earlier. Instead, they were rewarded, and former leader of the Irgun, Prime Minister Menachem Begin, Later, the renowned war criminal Ariel Sharon continued to carry out the slow genocide set in motion by the European U.S. Zionist project against Arab countries that continues till this very day. Morton A. Klein of the Zionist Organization of America published a report entitled Dar Yassin, History of a Lie, that claims that there was no massacre at Dar Yassin. To deny Dar Yassin is like denying the Nazi Judeocide in Europe during World War II. The massacre at Dar Yassin is true as the Nazi Holocaust in Europe. The village of Dar Yassin was only one of many massacres perpetrated by the Zionists and Israelis to terrorize the indigenous people of Palestine. Other Palestinian villages were massacred and occurred, which include An Kadim, which neighbors Dar Yassin, Qaqun, Tamdura, Yafa, Safa, Sufsaf, and in Sufsaf, 115 people were massacred at the wall of the Sufsaf Mosque. Haifa, Tirat Haifa, Jibzu, and many more. The Sufsaf residents witnessed their second massacre in the Sabra and Shatila refugee camp 34 years later in 1982. The war criminal Ari Sharon was directly responsible for that massacre. Contrary to Zionist myth that the old will die and the young will forget, 67 years later, some of our elders may have died, but the young still remember. The descendants of Dar Yassin, the Palestinian refugees, and people on the ground, at home and elsewhere, continue to struggle for the time when we can claim our absolute, sacred, individual, and collective right of return to our original homes and lands. UN Resolution 194 affirmed that the right of Palestinians to return their homes and lands is a resolution that was further clarified by the UN General Assembly Resolution 3236, which reaffirmed in subsection 2 the inalienable right of Palestinians to return to their homes and property, which they have been displaced and uprooted, and calls for their return. The Palestinian right of return is specifically to their original homes and lands, and not simply to what may be designated as a Palestinian state in the future working towards the right of return of Palestinian refugees. Palestinians around the world, like us here today, are not just commemorating the 67th Nakba of the Palestinian people, but are also simultaneously celebrating 67 years of resistance and perseverance. Our mission is not just to commemorate and remember what happened to our people during the Palestinian catastrophe, but to work towards rightfully returning home to Palestine. We remember but we still fight and endure towards our inevitable right to return. We, the Palestinian people, do not wish to be symbolically recognized, but we wish to return, and without the right of return, the Palestinian refugees to their homes, there will never be a just solution. In order for peace to come about, justice must be served. These are pictures here. I'm pretty much done with the context and brief history on the Dairy Scene Massacre. Um, I have set up some pictures here. These are Palestinian refugees who were fleeing in 1948 during the Nakba or the Palestinian catastrophe. Some were walking, some were uh, just got their belongings and took whatever they can and basically <coughs> fled the area. Um, some were loaded onto trucks like this, or tried to get on a truck, so they're not left behind and killed. Um, after the Dairy Seed Massacre, people started telling each other what happened there. It was scary. 
And that was the purpose, like what I was mentioning earlier in my talk. The purpose of the Dairy Seed Massacre was to let others flee, was people in Haifa and Yaffa to be scared and to run away. So unlike some Zionist claims where they say that they willfully left and they just abandoned homes, that was a lie. People were terrified. If we heard people dying down the hallway, we would want to run at the exit doors as well. This is a Palestinian woman. And why I put this picture up here is because of the Palestinian identity. 